And this question asks about um, nuclear felicity. All right. So I sent you a video uh, maybe a week ago about ranking nuclear files. Can somebody tell me what factors affect nuclear felicity and what the trends are? And I'll give you a jump start on that question. Uh, it can be we have uh, we can if we're doing a reaction in a polar product, or a polar a product solvent. What are the trends if the solvent is polar and a and, uh, and protic? Um, I think for the protic one, um, nuclear felicity decreases. Am I correct? Decreases going this way. Yeah, and it increases going from top to bottom. So that's decreasing and. This is top to bottom in polar a pro, uh, polar protic solvents is increasing. You're right <clears throat> from top to bottom. All right, and then for polar a protic solvents, what's the trend? Is it the opposite? It's the same going left to right. So it's decreasing. left to right, but it's also decreasing from top to bottom. <clears throat> right, so that's the trend. So when we look at these questions in 755, this is the, this is the information that we're working from. We're working from what we know about uh, how different nucleophiles react in different solvents. And we know the difference in protic and aprotic, right? Protic has This, this stylus was working just fine the other day. That's why I, I don't like you. All right, so protic solvents can donate H plus and A protic solvents cannot. So we think about protic solvents. Uh, we we'll to talk about this as we go, but let's take that first example. Let's look at the nucleophile. So we have a methyl anion, and it says rank in order of increasing nuclear felicity. So this is worst to best. Right, and where there is no solvent, just assume it to be a protic. So anytime you don't see the solvent listed, you're going to assume it's a protic. All right, <clears throat> so we got a methyl and we have uh, hydroxide and uh, amine. All right. What's the trend? Which one of those is going to be the best and which one's going to be the worst? Mm -hmm. Is uh, it makes two the best? Let's think about that now. If if we're in an aprotic solvent, think about this in terms of where the atoms are. If if this was a, I don't have a periodic table handy, but if this was periodic tables, would be B, C, N, O. <clears throat> so if you if you're decreasing going from left to right, <coughs> what the atom that's furthest to the left is going to be your best nucleophile and the further you go to the right that's going to the nuclear felicity is going to decrease so of these three which one is going to be the best one the one that's furthest to the left is that right yeah so we're gonna what do y'all want to use one to three and then which one do you want one to be the best and three to be the worst or whatever yeah. so we're gonna rank them 
three to one, right? Three is the worst, one is the best. So of these three, which one is the worst? Method, the method. The method is the furthest to the left. And it's decreasing from left to right. So the further mm -hmm. right you go, the worse the nuclear file is gonna get. So the method is actually gonna be your best one. So this is one. And then the hydroxyl is gonna be next. And then, I'm sorry, not the hydroxyl, the nitrogen. And then the hydroxyl is gonna be the worst, right? Cause it's decreasing, decreasing now from left to right. All right. So methyl is the best. In this case, methyl is the best and the hydroxyl is the worst. All right, let's do the next one and then we can, because we're gonna weave in some other information too uh, about these nucleophiles. So let's take uh, B, let's do B. We have water, hydroxyl and uh, the thiol anion. And it's telling us that it's in methanol, which is what type of solvent? Protic. Protic, good. All alcohols are protic. Right. All the alcohols are protic. Anyway, you see methanol, ethanol, isopropanol, butanol, doesn't matter. All, every alcohol is a protic solvent because it can donate the OH proton. We do proton transfer. So the trend in protic solvents is decreasing from left to right and increasing from top to bottom. So let's think about this in terms of these nucleophiles. So water is this, right? This is the hydroxyl or hydroxide anion. And then this is the thiol anion, all right? So you got these three. When we're comparing water and hydroxyl, which one do you think is better and why? This is something we learned in part one. Is it water? Say again. All right, one of the rules of nuclear felicity <laughs> is that a, a negative nucleophile, because here the, the nucleophilic atom is the same in both is oxygen. So a negatively charged nucleophile is always better than a neutral nucleophile. I'm just gonna abbreviate this and say greater than, all right? So a negative nucleophile is gonna be better than, than a neutral one. All right, so here between these two, which one do you think is gonna be best? We're not ranking them, we're just saying which one is gonna be better. So we'll know where to assign the rank. Mm. The hydroxyl. The hydroxide is better because it's negative, right? Both of them are oxygen-based nucleophiles, but the hydroxide is negative, so it's gonna be a better nucleophile. Now let's think about the trend, right? You have oxygen with two of, two of your nucleophiles. Let me just put this up here, boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and then sulfur is here under oxygen. What do you think? Which one of those is the best of the three? Okay. Sulfur, good, because it's, right under oxygen and it's in a protic solvent and it's nucleophilicity increases from top to bottom in a protic solvent. So sulfur is gonna be one. All right, can somebody tell me why nucleophilicity increases down a group uh, in a protic solvent? Right, well, if you read that section in, in the chapter or if you, I think it's in chapter seven or eight, I think. In the, in the uh, climb book, 
or if you watched a video or if you Googled it, <laughs> tell me why sulfur is a better nucleophile than a product salt. Um, because it's less toxic. It, um, the atoms get softer or something like that? They do. And when they get softer, they also get what? What else is changing? More polarized. Hmm? More polarizable, okay. But what's changing about the atom as you go down? What else? There's another property that you, uh, you're you in the neighborhood, but you're skipping over it. There's a particular property that, that increases as you go down the, the group. Is it the atomic radius? The radius. So the large, the, as you go down a, a group and those atoms get bigger, they're harder to solvate, right? So in a protic solvent, a bigger atom is going to be more nucleophilic because the protons have a hard time caging it in. And we talked about solvation, right? So this is best. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so this is best due to a larger atomic radius. Because you know in a product solvent, your nucleophile is going to get solvated. All right. All right. For two and three, which one is the worst of these three? Water. Right, water is going to be worse. Remember, that's why we did the comparison initially to say that um, a negative nucleophile is better than a neutral nucleophile. Water is neutral, hydroxide is negative. <clears throat> and so water is going to be my worst nucleophile in this case. All right, can we do, let's do. Um, Let's do C, those of us who are here for class. <laughs> Let's do C. All right. And I'm going to draw those out. Let's see, this was B. This is C. All right. That's one of my nuclear files. This is one. And then my other one is here. What does that COO minus mean? Anybody? When you see that abbreviation for a functional mm -hmm. group, what does that mean? Is it um, carboxylic acid? It's a, it's the, it's the, the deprotonated form of an acid. Yes, thank you. It's this part right here. Again, functional groups will make or break you. If if you don't recall them, you need to refresh yourself. Uh, there's no, there's no amount of teaching that can bring those functional groups back to your memory, other than you going back and committing them to memory. All right, so this is, so now we're gonna compare these three, of these three nucleophiles, which atom is the nucle is nucleophilic? Which atom is gonna attack if, if, it's, if we're attacking an electrophile? The oxygen. Oxygen. In, in, in each case, right? So it's the negatively charged atom here, here, and then it'll be the sulfur here. So what we, those, that's what we're comparing, sulfur and oxygen. We already know that we just 
proved or showed that sulfur is a better nucleophile than oxygen in a protic solvent because it did say that it was in methanol, right? So we already know how what the solvent is protic. We know where, we, where we're working from. So sulfur is gonna be our best nucleophile. Now between the other two, which one do you think is better? Is it the one at the bottom? Uh, the acetate anion. You think this one is better? Yeah. Okay. Why do you say that? I, I I'm I'm not gonna agree or disagree. I want to know what, what your rationale is for that. Um. Hmm. Look at what we're comparing it to. All right. Now I want you to think about something. What is it about a nucleophile that's, what, is, what does nucleophile mean? Think about that term. What is it, what does a nucleophile do? It um, donates electrons. Donates electrons, excellent. So the more able it is to donate electrons, the better it is as a nucleophile, is that right? Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Yeah. So the electrons here, Will be these are going to actually be tied up in resonance, so they're going to be less available. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna I can draw this resonance form like that. Another indispensable skill from part one. Uh, if I can draw that, right? And because those electrons are tied up in in resonance. They're competing that with competing resonance forms that equally contribute to the high resonance hybrid, right? This is going to be a worse nucleophile. So these electrons are tied up in resonance. And so this is not as good of a nucleophile as the ethoxide anion. All right. Does that make sense? Now you think about uh, if you think about electrons like money, and you you loan money to one person as opposed to your money being shared between you and another person, so you'll have less to loan. That's how this this resonance competition is, right? These electrons are less apt to attack an, an electrophile because they're tied up in resonance. Not to say that it's a horrible nucleophile, but it's not as good as a nucleophile that doesn't have uh, resonance tying the electrons up. All right, All right let's go ahead and do uh, let's do ENF and then we'll move on to another problem. All right, what about E? What do you think? And it's telling us that it's in acetone, which is protic or aprotic. Aprotic. It's aprotic. Good. All right, so now what's the trend again? Aprotic, polar aprotic solvents decreasing from left to right, <laughs> decreasing from top to bottom. All right, so if you think about fluorine and chlorine, fluorine is here, chlorine is here, bromine is here, iodine is here, right? So which one of, of those is your worst nucleophile? Chlorine. Did you say chlorine? Yes. Yeah. yeah, this is, so this is worst. So we're gonna, we're gonna, I'll write the answer down here for E. Chlorine is gonna be three. And then OH minus is gonna be one, right? Cause it's the furthest one to the left. And then F minus is gonna be two. All right, so these trends you can, again, if you take some time, commit the trends to memory, when you see these types of problems, they're not 
daunting, right? It actually becomes uh, pretty easy to, to remember once you know what the trends are and you know the difference in a product and an a product solvent. All right, what about F? Let's do that one and then we're done. We're gonna move on to another, another uh, topic. We have sulfur, fluorine, chlorine, and we have it in a, in a protic solvent, polar protic solvent. Which one is the best? Which one is the worst? Best being furthest left on the periodic table. Well, the sulfur be the best? Sulfur is going to be your best nucleophile, good. And then as you move to the right, you encounter fluorine and chlorine, but chlorine is beneath fluorine, right? And then a protic solvent, you can see that of those two, which one should be better? Chlorine. Chlorine. Right, so this is gonna be two and that's gonna be three. All of this is based on these trends and it's based on like hard, soft acid-based theory, which I did mention in the uh, ranking nucleophiles video that I sent you. So you have hard nucleophiles, which are small and compact and the charge is very dense. You have hard, uh, uh, soft nucleophiles, which are bigger, more polarizable electrons further away from the nucleus. Uh, and, and, and all of that ties together when you think about the solvent. The solvent is really critical uh, to which nucleophiles are gonna be favored in substitution. Uh, and it's all, it's all dependent on, again, the hard, hardness or the softness of the nucleophile. All right, let's, do a, let's, let's move to another topic because I think we beat that horse to death. Um, Let's do seven, we're gonna do 750 and we're gonna do 749, right? So let's do 749 first. And then I, I, actually what I'm gonna do is, so many people we got, no, never mind. I'm not doing a breakout room. That's gonna be like, no, nah, that's a waste of time. All right, let me, let me, um, Let's do 749. All right, it says draw the substitution product that results when butyl bromide reacts with a, each nucleophile. So this is the substrate in each case. What type of reaction is this gonna be? if I have a primary substrate with a good leaving group. And we know it's a substitution because the problem tells mm -hmm. us that it's a substitution. What type of uh, reaction is that gonna be? SN2. Good, it's gonna be a SN2 substitution. All right, so each one of these nucleophiles reacting with that. We can go, really go down the line and do this really quickly. Uh, what what is the product from A? Right. If it's a substitution, what are we doing? This is the this is the most basic tenet of substitution. Even if you don't know the rate law, even if you don't know if it's SN1, SN2, you should be, you should at least know that the leaving group and the nucleophile and uh, they exchange, right? They get exchanged, they substitute for one another. Right? That's the most basic like premise of substitution, that the leaving group leaves and the nucleophile replaces it. So we got one, two, three, we got nine problems and 19 folks logged in. I need to hear from nine different people. What is the, what is the uh, product from A? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. The OH replaces the leaving. This is the product from A. All right. Somebody else. What's B? 
And the SH replaces the bromine. Okay, good. Somebody else, what's C? We got 19 folks logged in and two people giving all the answers. Somebody the else give me the answer for C. Go ahead. The C and will replace the bromine. So the, the cyanide is here, right? Yes, sir. All right. all right, good. Thank you. All right, D, come on. Don't get don't get freaked out by this. All this is is an isopropyl group. It looks just like this. So the oxygen is your nucleophile. See what it, if you see what a negative charge is, that's the atom that's going to attack, right? So this is just uh, that's just a condensed form of the isopropyl group. So what's the product going to be like? Look like for that. Oh, we got 20 people logged in. Come on. Um, who was the last person who spoke? Who was that? So I don't call you. Alicia. Okay, thank you. Uh, Trinity, what's the product for D? We're going to be stuck on D until somebody gives me the answer for it. Go ahead. Whoever put your hand up, go ahead. Hey, Dr. Russell, it's Diallo. Yeah, go um, ahead, Diallo. So with the O, it, it wouldn't replace, well, it would replace bromine. Yeah. But. Okay. And, and everything that's attached to it, right? That's okay, the thing so about everything it. else. Yeah, the nucleophile, when it comes, Whatever is bonded to that nucleophilic atom is coming with it. It's like a train. All the pieces are connected. So when the oxygen comes in and attacks, that's the product. Thank you for, for chiming in, too. I appreciate that. Come on, somebody else do E. Put your biscuit down and do E. Okay, I lucky want to try E, too. Um, Come on. So with the carbon, the carbon will replace the bromine and the the, uh, the triple bond uh, with the CH will also be there too. The whole thing is coming. Bet, 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 bet. Okay. The whole bet, thing bet, is bet. coming. Good. All right, F. Did the water replace the bromine? Two. You are not a new person. Oh. <laughs> I wanted to try it. <laughs> I need some. I need some new people. We have the same twenty people logged in every day, and the same two people giving all the answers. So some got to give. All right, but thank you. You're right. Notice the charge on water too. I love. I, I, when water is, if it's a neutral nucleophile like water, when it attacks an electrophile, it's going to become positive. If it's negative, it's going to become neutral, right? So that plus charge on oxygen is important. Again, another skill from part one that's indispensable. Formal charge. All right, what about G? Somebody come on with G. Or do I have to call somebody off the list? All right, uh, Nadja. I hope I pronounced that right. And what's the, yeah. what's the uh, product for G? Would it be um, in like in H two? Well, you know, you're not going to lose any atoms off your nucleophile. The nitrogen is; it does have a long pair, so that's your nucleophilic atom. But it's actually going to attack like that. 
and be, okay. pos and be positively charged. No, no, that's no long paragraph. All right. What about H? Somebody give me H. What's my what's the nuclear file in H? Is sodium positive or negative? Is that a part of your nuclear file or is it is it a salt? Maya? All right, we need we need to ask for H. Would it just be the iodine that substitutes? This is a salt. Of sodium and iodine. All right. So iodine is my nucleophile. So you're right. Iodine is just gonna replace bromine. All right, what about I? This is also a salt. Anytime you see sodium, sodium is going to be a counter ion. It does not form organometallic covalent bonds. It's going to be a counter ion. And then N3 is negative. This is what we, this is an azid. What's the product? We waiting on somebody to step up to the plate. Can I answer or do you want someone else to answer? Go ahead. The nitrogen will attach. Here? Yes. With the name attached. Yeah, and the sodium is, is going to end up with, and anytime you have a salt like that, your metal ends up with your leaving group. The same, it'll be the same thing here where it was sodium iodide. It'll be a, it'll form a salt with your leaving group. All right, let's, let's do, um, let's see, let's do 750. To cut these out and need more room. All right, so uh, this is asking the same thing. Draw the products of each nucleophilic substitution. What are we doing? How, what's the strategy for this problem? Um, find the living group and see um, if it's like primary. Okay. Okay, so we find the leaving group. And then what are we going to do? Now, this is not asking anything about mechanism. It's not asking if it's uh, SN2, SN, we know it's a substitution, but it's not asking if it's SN2 or SN1. We find the leaving group, and then what else do we find? The substrate. So the, the leaving group is a part of the substrate. Good. And then by default, this becomes my nucleophile. All right, so for that first problem, let me just cut it out.
if I can. What's the product gonna look like? With the oxygen tank, the chlorine. The oxygen is the, is the nucleophilic atom in my nucleophile. All right. So yes. All right. What about um? Let's do uh D. What about D? Got room to put that over there. And this was uh was there. That's A. What about D? We know that this is secondary. This is a secondary substrate. So this could be. We don't know what the solvent is, so we can say that for this, it could be SN2 or SN1. The solvent is going to dictate that. <laughs> what about D? What can we say about D? Do you think that's going to be SN2 or SN1? Even though it's not asking about the mechanism, what do you think? Based on what you know about using the ice method, identifying all of your pieces, right? We don't have a solvent, but we have a substrate, we have a leaving group, and we have a nucleophile. Would it be SN1? It would be. Why do you say that? I agree with you 100%. Why, why, would, why do you say it's SN1? Because like the, uh, but a nucleophile is like um, alcohol. And then it's on like a secondary carbon. Actually, that, that's good. This is a this is actually a tertiary carbon. So that's that's the rationale. That would be my first mm -hmm. rationale as to why it's SN1 is because the leaving group is on the uh, on a tertiary carbon. But you're right. This, the substrate is conducive to SN1, right? And I'll, let's go back and add in some of the other stuff we know. When the when it's SN1, what's the first step in the mechanism? What happens first? Lost a leaving group. Lost a leaving group, which leaves behind what? Carbocation and immediate. Carbocation. So the more stable that carbocation is, the more apt the reaction is to go through SN1. All right, let's actually go through the mechanism for this, for D. This is chlorine, put some electrons on that. You said, Taj, the first step is loss of leaving group. Is that right? Yes, sir. All right, so we're going to end up with this. This as our intermediate. Right, plus Cl minus. And then my, my electrophile, my nucleophile is actually the alcohol. So let's write that in, CH3, CH2. OH, I'm not detaching anything from this alcohol. Everything that's attached to that oxygen comes with it as the nucleophile, all right? So that's, we're not breaking apart any atoms, we're not breaking any bonds, we're just making a bond between the carbocation carbon and the OH. this way. So this is O H All right. And this is positive now plus CL minus. All right. So it at the end when you get to this stage right here, that is not that's not going to stay like that. All right. Eventually that's going to be a proton transfer. Actually, I'm, I'm going to write this up here. Right, there'll be a proton transfer between these two. So that, that'll be an additional step. So you'll do proton transfer here. So your final product would be here. All right. But it is a SM1. In this case, it looks like so if 
ethanol is the nucleophile, it's possible that it's the solvent. So it's just reacting with the solvent, which is it's quite possible. It happens all the time. All right. Um, let's do, uh, I'm going to assign B and C for you to do on your own. Yeah, and and F. So you'll, you'll do those. Uh, you'll do those on your own. Let's let's grab another question from up here. Uh, let's do. Uh, we got three minutes left. Let's do eight thirty-four. Now I'm gonna sign also uh, eight forty-one D and uh, F eight forty-one D and F. These are both. For you to complete. All right, now we're going to do 834C. All right, read the, somebody read that question. Draw all constitutional isomers formed in each E2 reaction and predict the major product using Z cells rule. All right, so we got basically three things in this question. First of all, is asking us to draw constitutional isomers, right? The de by definition, they have the same structure, same molecular formula, but mm -hmm. a different structure. Mm -hmm. All right. So it'll be the same combination of atoms, but they'll just be they'll have different structures and then it says it's telling us that it's e2 so that's a given right we know we so we know what the mechanism is and then it says predict the major product using zay cells rule what is zay cells rule what does that tell us <laughs> isn't it like that the major product is the most substituted one yep the major product for an elimination is the most substituted alkene. All right, so now we, we, we know everything this problem is asking us or telling us, we've given us that it's E2, it's telling us to find the major product using Zayt cells rule. So, we, so our elimination products, we're gonna have to compare them and then it says draw all the isomers. So we're going to do that anyway. So if this is an elimination problem, what do we need to identify first? Okay, good. The leaving group. So let's do that. So here, iodine is the leaving group. Is that right? Yes. Now, what do we need to identify? Well, we know that we know it's an E2, so we, we know it's not going to be done in a protic solvent. All right, and we have the base right here, so we know it's not going to be in a protic solvent. We, what, we, what we need to identify now are the alpha, alpha positions, which in this case, you got a, a hydrogen here, so this is alpha. You got a hyd two hydrogens on this side, so that's going to be alpha. And you got a hydrogen here, or three hydrogens here. So all of these are alpha uh, protons. All right, let me draw the, draw the products in. And I'm going to, on Friday, I need y'all to do the mechanism. And somebody on Friday, we're going to start out with that. 
then we're going to actually start uh, conjugation. All right. So the products are here, right? You can see right away that we're going to have a, an, a double bond here. We're going to have one here. And then we're also going to have one here. I'll just make it black. All right, so I'm gonna draw that one first. So we're gonna have this as a product. All right, we're gonna have this as a product. And we'll have this as a product. Those are my three products. We'll discuss the mechanism on Friday. So go through and put the arrows in, show the base doing the proton transfer. We'll have somebody discuss that on Friday. And then we're gonna, that'll be the last problem we do from this section. I'm gonna sign in B and uh, F. All right, we got to stop here because we're out of time. We'll pick it up on Friday. We're going to start conjugation. Um, and then, um, yeah, I'll, we'll, next time we see each other will be the Monday after spring break. But Friday, we'll start, we're going to start a new section. All right, any questions before we?